Good morning. Welcome everyone to worship this morning at First English on this final day of June. It feels like July already, so I think we're ready for it. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please fill out the friendship pads, send them down and back, and greet one another, and especially any guests that we may have with us today, and invite our guests down for a time of coffee and fellowship as well, and all of you, please join us too. We also welcome those listening, worshiping with us by means of our KDIO broadcast and also later at the Fairway View neighborhoods by the tape. We thank those making the tape ministry possible today. And our broadcast itself is sponsored by Jonathan and Carol Yidsty in honor of their grandsons, Cade, Camden, Landon, Peter, James, and Liam. So they've got a basketball team with one substitute. That's good. <laughs> and. Um, we, the office will be closed Thursday and Friday this week for the Independence Day holiday. This coming Wednesday at 1.30, we will have our monthly communion service at the Fairway View neighborhoods. And again, that's at 1.30 if you'd like to join us. We always like to be thinking ahead here at First English, so please read the insert in the bulletin regarding the Scandinavian food fair. And as you have spare time this summer, you can create something for the Scandinavian food fair. Uh, any other announcements that I'm overlooking? If not, we have a special guest speaker this morning who would like to share a few words at this time, and I introduce Jason Helgeson. I was paying him back because there a few years ago, Jason in the summer might be the only kid that came up for the children's message, so <laughs> he's a little larger now than he used to be. Please rise for the greeting and sharing of the peace. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to greet one another. We continue our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness as is found on page 10 in With One Voice. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, and we will continue with our entrance hymn, number 777, In the Morning When I Rise.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Kyrie eleison Christe eleison Kyrie eleison And our hymn of praise this morning in honor of our Independence Day coming this week, we will sing, O oh, Beautiful for Spacious Skies. And we join together in the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading can be found on page 254 of the Old Testament <clears throat> in the Pew Bibles. In the short preceding today's reading, the prophet Elijah flees for his life to the security of God's mountain. There the Lord reveals to Elijah that there are still other faithful people in Israel and commissions him to anoint new leaders, including his own successor, Elisha. A reading from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. 
And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, of Abel Meholon, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shephat, who was plowing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them, using the equipment from the oxen. He boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 16 is found in the Red Eel W hymnals between the readings and the hymns. We will read responsively by half verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land. Upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods. Shall have their troubles multiplied. I will pour out drink offerings to such gods. Never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart <clears throat> teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave. Nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading can be found on page 146 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. <coughs> For Paul, the freedom Christ gives is not permission to do whatever we want. It is the invitation to be what we could not be otherwise. The power and guidance of Christ's Holy Spirit produces a different kind of life, one marked by the fruit of this Holy Spirit. A reading from Galatians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. <laughs> Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to be prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, emanites, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I've warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
invite any children to come forward at this time, please. Morning, Jace. Are you having a good summer? Good. Archer, are you having a good summer? Too humid out. Too humid out. One in every crowd, isn't that? I agree, though. I do agree. And how are Bennett and Bryson this morning? And Molly, yeah. good morning. I have a question for you. It's an old joke. What are we going to celebrate Thursday? The 4th of July. Now, does Canada have a 4th of July? Yeah. yeah, they have a 1st and a 2nd and a 3rd and a 4th, just like we do. They just don't celebrate it. That's the bad joke. So, what do we celebrate on the 4th of July? It's also called Independence Day. So, what are we celebrating? When America became a country, when we declared our independence. And we live in a country where we say we are free. So, does that mean you can do anything you want to? Why not? Because stuff's against the law. Very good, that's right. Because we are free, but as we heard Dave just read, we are free to serve our neighbor, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So we say we are free from the power of sin, death, and the devil, and we are free to do certain things, to show acts of love, to show the fruits of the Spirit. Now, Dave read them all, and Anne made these nice fancy cards for me a while back. So... Self-control, that means we know when to talk and when not to. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Gentleness, we treat each other in a gentle manner. We're faithful, that means people can count on us. We keep our promises. Generosity, that means you share what you've been given with people that need it. My favorite one, but it's not the last one this time, we are to show kindness because people need to be treated kindly. This is the one your parents need, right? Patience. Because sometimes, how hard is it to wait for your birthday to get here? It's hard, isn't it? Did you have fun at Bible camp? You needed patience while you were waiting for that too, didn't you? Or maybe you need patience until you can light fireworks. So, And then we have peace. It's the law. It's the law. Yeah. Then we have peace which means we don't let things bother us even when they're bad because we know we'll make it through. Joy is what I see on your faces right now, nice and smiling. And then we did these backwards from how Dave read them because the one that makes it all possible, all of these, is love. Because if we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, it makes it possible to do all these other things. So those are the fruits of the Spirit, and that's the way that we will be, that other people know that we are followers of Jesus, because we try to show those things. So this week, I want you to remember that, and when you get mad at your brother, or you get mad at your brother, or you get mad at your dad or your cousins, you never get mad at your brothers, do you? Never. Then I want you to remember what we can share instead especially the patience and the kindness and the love. Thank you very much for helping me today, and I hope you have a great week. Please rise if you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. 
As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who looks puts a hand to the no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and we will continue a special music by John Yidsty, accompanied by Carol, American Anthem. came before the dream of a nation where freedom would endure the work and the prayers of centuries have brought us to this day what shall be our legacy what will our children say let them say of me, I was one who believed in sharing the blessings I received. Let me know in my heart when my days are through, America. America, I gave my best to you. Each generation, from the plains to distant shore, with the gifts that they were given, were determined to leave a more valiant battles fought together, acts of conscience fought alone. These are the seeds from which America has grown. Let them say of me, I was one who believed in sharing the blessings I received. Let me know in my heart when my days are through. America, America, I gave my best to you. For those who think they have nothing to share, who fear in their hearts, there is no hero there. Know that quiet acts of dignity are that which fortifies the soul of a nation that never dies. Let them say of me, I was one who believed in sharing the blessings I received. Let me know in my heart when my days are through. America, 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 I gave my best to 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Think for a moment this morning, if you would, about some of the issues or questions that have faced the church in your lifetime. You know, clapping or not clapping, which language to use, the role of women, mergers, who is sitting in my pew. The sermon is way too long. The list can go on and on and on. And when it comes to issues facing the church, it's not a new thing. It's not just for our generation or era. The church has been facing issues from the very beginning. And as long as there are human beings involved, there will probably be issues. In our lesson from Galatians this morning, Paul is taking on one of the first major issues that faces the early Christian church. He's responding directly to a question regarding the church's mission. The question, who is to receive the gospel message? Was salvation in Jesus strictly for the Jews alone or for both Jews and Gentiles? Because for the first century Christians, this was a hot topic. The Jewish Christians thought they were to be the only recipients of the promises that were made to Abraham and his descendants. And if only Jewish Christians were in, where did that leave the non-Jews who had faith and who wanted to follow Jesus? You know, people like us. The early church was burdened by a self-inflicted yoke of slavery, as Paul called it. They had established predetermined boundaries for membership, and they had put limits on God's grace. And Paul would have nothing at all to do with that. Paul is crystal clear. Jesus came for both Jews and the Gentiles, for all people, so that all might experience that freedom that's given by Christ alone. Paul says, for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For freedom Christ has set us free. Now when you think of freedom, it can imply that we can do whatever we want, wherever we want, to whomever we want. But as Archer shared, some things are against the law, and that's not the intended meaning of our freedom. Paul says, for you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, yes, we're free but we're free to serve, to love our neighbor. And Paul further explains we are to live in the spirit and not in the flesh, for the flesh will keep us enslaved. And Paul gives a long list of characteristics of the flesh, including strife, jealousy, dissensions, envy, and the list could go on and on. But those things are not of God. It would be easy here to go into a long list of everything that's wrong, of everything that's wrong with the world and wrong with us of what we do wrong. But that's not the direction Paul took, and that's not the direction Jesus takes, and that's not the direction we should take either. We should not be pointing out what people do wrong. That's not our direction. Rather, the emphasis is put on what we should do, not what we shouldn't do. Paul adds, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit, and then he gives us the list, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And it's rather heartwarming here because there's no limitation to bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Paul says if we live by the Spirit, we should also be guided by the Spirit. And there's a consistency of me message here. Simply put, a life in the Spirit is a life that produces good fruit. Now, that being said, we all know it's probably easier to put on a yoke of slavery to things than to bear the fruits of the Spirit at times. The yoke of slavery can take many forms for us. It can be our insecurities, our fears, it can be our guilt, our worries, things that cause us stress, and there are many. 
We can get caught up in the pressures of daily deadlines and schedules. We can become slaves to our own strivings. But Christ has freed us from that power of sin, death, and the devil. And we remember that freedom came at a price. We need to remind ourselves that we are free from, yes, but we are also free for, free for service. Free to bear the fruits of the Spirit. It's all about the choices we make. At funerals, I sometimes use a Max Licato writing called Choices to describe a spirit-filled life, and I share it again now. Licato writes, I choose love. No occasion justifies hatred. No injustice warrants bitterness. I choose love. Today I will love God and what God loves. I choose joy. I will refuse the temptation to be cynical. I will refuse to see people as anything less than human beings created by God. I choose peace. I will live forgiven. I will forgive. I choose patience. I will overlook the inconveniences of the world. Rather than complain that the wait is too long, I will thank God for a moment to pray. I choose kindness. I will be kind to the poor, for they are alone. I will be kind to the rich, for they are afraid. I will be kind to the unkind, for such is how God has treated me. I choose goodness. I will go without a dollar before I take a dishonest one. I will be overlooked before I will boast. I will confess before I accuse. I choose faithfulness. I will keep my promises. My de debtors will not regret their trust. My associates will not question my word. My wife and my children will never question my love. I choose gentleness. Nothing is won by force. If I raise my voice, may it only be in praise. If I clench my fist, may it only be in prayer. I choose self-control. I will be impassioned in my faith, influenced by God, and taught by Christ. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. To these, with the Lord's help, I commit my day. And if you think about it, that's what a church should look like. As we said in the children's message in the signs, that's what we should look like. So your challenge that I give you for this week is to choose one of those fruits each day, two if you really want to work hard, and concentrate on being that to everyone you come into contact with. No test, no report. You don't have to tell me how you did. It's just a challenge as today you leave this place as you go in peace to serve the Lord. May the Spirit be with you. Amen. I believe we will continue at this time with our morning offering and our offering hymn.
Please rise if you are able. And with all Christians everywhere, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And joining our voices with God's people around the world, let us offer our prayers for those in need. Use your church, O God, in all its forms to show the fruits of the Spirit to all people in all places, and use us as your hands and voice to a world in need of good news. Lord, in your mercy, guide us to be careful stewards of all you have made. We thank you for summer-like weather for fields and gardens. Send sunshine and rain as you see we need. Give relief and bless recovery efforts where flooding, storm, and wildfire continue to be a problem. Lord, in your mercy. As we observe our Independence Day, give us courage to speak up for the oppressed. Give wisdom to our leaders at all levels. Bring peace and calm to the Middle East and all areas where there is conflict and violence. Help us to follow your command to love others as you love us. Bless and keep safe Sergio and all who will be reporting for basic training this summer. And continue to keep safe all who continue to serve and work to keep order both here and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Give protection to refugees, shelter for the homeless, and comfort and peace to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Especially do we remember those in assisted living and long-term care facilities. And Don, Joanne, Marlo, Barb, Glenn, Vivian, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Shirley, Aaron, Megan, Randy, Gordy, Jessica, Anders, Jim, Matthew, Paulette, Paul, Verdon, Lauren, Larry, Stella, Natalie, Jeanette, John, Linda, Sean, Christopher, Bella, Ron, Christopher, Dorothy, Terry, Kelvin, Gwen, and those we name in our hearts at this time. Move each of us to be a compassionate advocate for all in need. Give strength and bless all who work as caregivers and those in the medical professions. Lord, in your mercy. Keep safe all who travel this summer, especially during the, this busy holiday time. Bless those who are celebrating significant events in their lives. Be with this community of faith so that the love of Christ may be present in all we do. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless each of you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. And our closing hymn, number 721, Go, my children, with my blessing. You may be seated. Mm -hmm. 